Good evening, everybody. It's David Schlotthauer here in the home weather office with breaking news to share with you all right now in today's video. On Thursday, there looks to be a severe weather event that looks to shape up across portions of Texas with the potential for large hail, damaging winds, and possibly a tornado. We're going to get into this yet again for the Deep South. So when we take a look at the latest European model for Kansas, we do have some showers and thunderstorms that look to develop by Wednesday afternoon into the evening hours. But this is not it. As we move into Thursday morning, those showers and thunderstorms look to develop even further east into Iowa, into Nebraska, as well as Illinois and northern Missouri. But it's down here to the south like Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, as well as Louisiana, Mississippi and Alabama where we're going to really have to watch closely for discrete supercells as well as some linear segments that could be the focal point for some very large hailstones, damaging wind gusts, and the potential for tornadoes. So going forward here by Thursday late morning, early afternoon, we can see there is the showers and thunderstorms that look to set up. And the worst thing that could happen is this will impact your evening commute as far as what the models are showing, especially over Dallas, Tyler, Texas, and over to the eastern side, including for Arkansas. So if you're getting home from work early or if you're leaving later, just be aware, you could have some significant delays due to large hailstones, some very heavy rainfall that could slow your commute down, along to go with maybe a tornado or funnel cloud. But that's not it. This is going to continue all the way into, say, Thursday night into Friday morning. Look at this. Moving into Mississippi and Alabama, into Tennessee, as well as uh, Kentucky, including for southern Indiana. See the splotchiness? This is where we do have our well-formed dynamics. We got the warm front here. We got the cold front. And we just got a focal point for this severe weather setup through Friday morning. And that's why I think in their next outlook from the Storm Prediction Center on their next day six, that is, I think they're going to highlight something down here over the Arklet, not the, the like the Missilitex area, including for Alabama. Now, why are we going to see the severe weather setup beginning late Wednesday, but especially on Thursday into Friday? Well, it's because of this positively tilted trough that we see right here. Look at the wind maximum moving across California. When we get something like this, this is a amplifying trough. It deepens and we get better dynamics. And take note of what goes on in Texas. So by the afternoon hours of Tuesday, we can see our trough is still buckled out here across the desert southwest where we do get ascending flow. Take note of these wind barbs moving in this general direction. At the surface, that helps to drag in moisture off the Gulf of Mexico. And we can clearly see that here with dew points in the mid to upper 60s across Dallas, Texas, Austin, Texas, San Angelo, Texas. You go down towards Corpus Christi and Houston, Texas, you got dew points in the low 70s in early to mid-March. That is absurd. You don't see that this time of the year just yet. You don't see that usually until late March, but nevertheless, it's going to be a very moist atmosphere into Missouri as well. You got dew points in the 60s too. But when you factor this all in, when we look at our mid-level lapse rates, which is a change in temperature with height from roughly the 700 millibar level to 500 millibars, which is between between about 10,000 feet and 18,000 feet above the surface, so above my head, this is where you see these lapse rates coming into um, fruition. So we got very, very steep mid-level lapse rates across Central Texas, Oklahoma, into Kansas, as well as Missouri. Look at these numbers, 8 to almost 9 degrees Celsius per one kilometer. That doesn't sound like much, but that is pretty steep. And when you have a lot of the instability in place and a lot of the moisture, this does yield extreme instability across Texas. And we can see these red colors, these orange colors. This yields 2,500 to 3,000 joules per kilogram of instability. And in other words, this is thunderstorm juice. This is how much energy is in the atmosphere. So if we get a supercell, we get a Boeing segment, we use up a lot of that energy to get some really large hailstones that could reach two inches in diameter, damaging wind gusts that it could exceed about 65 miles an hour, and the potential for funnel clouds or tornadoes since there is going to be enough shear in this area. And that instability goes all the way up into Missouri, even 2,000 joules up there. So definitely enough 
to get thunderstorms going there and they could be severe including for southeastern kansas where you're up to 2,000 joules per kilogram so it's this area really on thursday that we're really going to have to watch for severe thunderstorm development and then look at this it continues even into the day on friday but more likely further south here not as much instability the further north you go it's going to be down here in southern texas southern louisiana where you have up to 2,000 joules per kilogram locally up to almost 3,000 joules down here in the southern tip of texas therefore it is not surprising from the storm prediction center to issue a slight risk that is a 15 percent chance for severe weather on thursday into friday morning exactly with what i'm showing you all on the european model we showed you that there's gonna be a lot of thunderstorms in this area that's why they are going for a slight risk even the gfs some of these other global models really coming into um, agreement with this and doesn't surprise me maybe by the day four outlook we could get a small 30 percent risk of severe weather down here in central eastern texas because of all the ingredients coming together for a severe weather event i'm not calling it an outbreak but it's definitely going to be an elevated day to really watch for supercells for boeing segments and possibly for some upscale growth development into a linear qlcs line and like i said at the beginning of the video some of these storms could produce tornadoes really large hailstones because of the instability the steepening mid-level lapse rates that we have and plenty for, full of moisture um, coming up from the south and the wind shear so we could see hailstones possibly one to two inches in diameter and the potential for very strong wind gusts potentially reaching 65 miles an hour in the texas oklahoma more than likely the arklatex area is where i'm really focusing on but it doesn't surprise me if they do extend their slight risk up here in missouri and portions of kansas now while the seven day probability outlook from the storm prediction center has highlighted potential or predictability too low at this given time once their next day six comes out which is by early 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 very early tomorrow morning like about one or two in the morning pacific time um they're going to possibly put a slight risk out here for the deep south i'm not sure if they're gonna do that we're not sure okay but it's a possibility now before i do in the video i do have five important announcements to share with you all as always i've been mentioning this in my past few videos I am going to be hosting a total solar eclipse live stream on Monday, April the 8th, 2024. It begins in my location at Kerrville, Texas at 12.15 p.m. We're going to be making the drive to Kerrville, Texas on April the 3rd. It's going to be a very exciting event. And not only that, I will be doing a Q&A live stream on April the 2nd about what my plans are for this solar eclipse. So I highly recommend you all joining that stream so that way your questions can be answered if you have any. And then of course, my first Atlantic hurricane seasonal outlook will be released on April the 15th. So on Monday, April the 15th is when it will come out. And then my first routine tropical weather outlook will begin on May 25th and it will run through November the 1st. But as always, you could also follow me here on Discord at Weather Force today. There will be a link in the description below this video along to go with my Twitter. But anyways, if you did enjoy today's detailed forecast, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button and sharing this video with their family and friends on social media. As always, have a great rest of your Saturday. I'll be back in the home weather office tomorrow with another quick update on the severe weather for the Thursday timeframe.